Hey, what's going on? I thought I'd uh, do a little video here about uh, autofocus film cameras from the 80s and 90s. This is, these are just autofocus cameras. Uh, I've been selling uh, cameras on uh, eBay for a number of years, so I've uh, tested hundreds of them, so I kind of know these cameras fairly well. Um, so I'm going to go over each name brand and kind of tell you uh, features of them and uh, how good they are. And uh, anyway, let's go to it. I, I didn't want to do any editing, so I'm just going to go straight through this and we're going to talk about it for probably for about five minutes. All right, first off, uh, I've got four here. I've got a Pentax ZX30, a Canon Rebel 2000 series. All the Rebel ones are, are, are uh, very lightweight, just like this Pentax over here. These are the lightest weight out of the two, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, Nikon N60, most of theirs are kind of bulky. Um, and then Minolta uh, 7000 series. Um, if you like the uh, bulky, uh, some of these other ones do have bulkier ones, like this uh, Pentax SF, and either SF series will be a little bit bulkier and heavier if you're looking for something a little bit more rugged, but these are plasticky and lightweight. If you're looking for lightweight, I'll probably stick with those. Now, the good thing about these cameras is uh, if you find one with a kit lens, um, they'll work on modern day DSLRs as well. So uh, that's just something to think about. Um, if you find a lot that has a few lenses with them, it might, you might want to do that. Or if you've already got, say, a Pentax, a lot of those Pentax lenses will work on this as well for uh, from DSLR and same with Canon and Nikon. Um, the only th uh, Minolta is kind of different. Uh, Minolta is a Alpha A mount, so Alpha A. Uh, if you have a Sony, an older Sony digital camera, not a not a mirrorless, a, a, di a digital camera like a A three hundred fifty. Those uh, the lenses are universal on those, so you could uh, you could uh, use these Minolta lenses on that three A three fifty. So just something to think about there. Um, <coughs> So, which one? Let's let's talk about batteries first. So the, this this one's broken, but um, this Minolta uses uh, AAA batteries, triple or double A batteries, and that is a real advantage. If you find a, a camera that actually uses double or triple A batteries, it is a super big advantage. Why? Because they all use like weird batteries, like these or these, or it just depends what model or these. Well, each of these batteries costs like 14 bucks, so it's kind of, uh, and the, these cameras cost about 14 bucks, so you're, you're spending just as much in the battery as that you are on the camera. So if you find one that, that uh, uses AA batteries or AAA batteries, that was an advantage. I would definitely uh, probably go with that one. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, so, I, like I said, I've sold hundreds of these. So let me let me tell you which ones uh, from the just the brand name. Which ones um, are the most reliable? Uh, meaning, uh, how many do I get in broken of each? I get a lot of broken ones in. So, um, I would say the one that is actually broken the most. It's between the Pentax and the Minolta because this one always the, I'll find a ton that the uh, the mirror is locked up on, or the uh, or the shutters having problems. So between these, these and this one, a lot of times you'll get rusted, uh, battery corrosion and stuff. But a lot of times this kind of has the same issues. These seem to be used the most. I mean, some of these I get in, they look mint and they're they're not working. But the the Minolta back in the day, I guess people really really used them a lot because they're. All of them I get in, or most of them, it seems like they were really used. It wasn't like a doctor got it and left it in his closet, you know, and, and now you're getting it get from a, a estate sale or something like that. But well, I found that kind of interesting. Um, yeah, the, the ones that actually are less, I get less broken ones in, are actually these Rebels, but they're always in, like, super condition, like I'm saying. Uh, but I do have some broken ones of them. It's not like they like they don't have faults. Um, here's a here's another uh, Nikon there and it's broken as well. I can't remember what's broken with it but uh, yeah uh, and after all if you're looking at all these cameras uh, one thing to look for is if you're going to be doing action photography just look look see how high that uh, that shutter speed goes up to. But at the end of the day I just want to say this at the end of the day all, all these are is a box. It's just a box that's opening a shutter, exposing the film. 
that's all they're doing. So I wouldn't get too too into it uh, going over everything. Just get one that, that uh, maybe the lightweight or the more beefy one you like. And uh, just I would invest more in the quality film that you're getting than actually um, going on going out and trying to find the best Nikon or the best Pentax because the, the features in them are very subtle between each camera and after all like I said it's just a box exposing film so I hope that helps if you have any questions uh, leave a comment below I guess I should talk about the autofocus since these are all autofocus cameras I do not find a huge difference between all these two or all these four when I when I go try them out um, they're all very similar. I don't think you're going to find a huge difference. So just get the one you like. If you've already used one of these systems and have a DSLR, I would probably recommend getting one of those and trying to find one that actually has AA batteries. I hope that helps. If you have a question, leave a comment below. And thanks for watching as always. Six minutes, not too bad. Thanks.